Hello! Hello! Hey! This is Noir here again. Another math video. Welcome aboard. Please take a seat and be ready to be amazed. No, whoa, isn't that just amazing? What is this on my, my screen here? He looks like a blue whale, I guess. He's blue. He looks like a blue whale. Oh my goodness, a blue whale? That's a monster of a being, isn't it? My goodness. Like the largest, uh, I believe, isn't it? The largest uh, animal, marine animal, well, animal for that matter, on our planet ever. Pretty, pretty incredible. It's a big fella. In fact, they used to be, uh, you know, the whaling, they used to actually kill these guys quite a bit. Fortunately, though, I think their numbers are coming back a little bit. Anyway, little side note on our feature animal of the day, <laughs> as Mr. War likes to put. All right, we may carry him around for a while. Let's take a look at, we're doing problem solving. This is lesson 3.11, okay? It says we're going to be looking at some problem solving. We're adding, subtract money. Oh, cool. We just did that recently, huh? With our whole J.A. Biz Town. Yeah. Deal with some money. The essential question says that how can the strategy make a table help you organize and keep track of your bank account balance? I yeah, know that could probably come in handy there in Mr. War's class, eh? Let's go ahead and bring this down a little bit. We're going to go and look at one of the mathematical practices. This would be math mathematical. Ooh, this whale got so small. Oh. oh, don't eat the blue whale. Come on. And I believe that this is mathematical practice numero uno. It says make sense of problems and persevere in solving them. So you guys, when you're presented with a problem, you're going to make a plan. You're going to carry out your plan and you're going to evaluate its success. And it breaks it up for you here, like how you do the before, during and after. You explain the problem. That might mean what question am I being asked, blah, 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 persevere, you know, you're going to monitor your work. If your plan's not working, change it. Does all the stuff make sense? You get the idea. Yes, mathematical practice, huge in solving some of these math problems, especially with the Common Core. So let's shrink this down again, and let's unlock this problem. Unlock. Give me the key. There it is. Now, it says here, it says, at the end of May, Mrs. Freeman, had a bank account balance of $442.37. Since then, she has written a check for $63.92 and made a deposit of $350. All right, Mrs. Freeman says she has $729.45 in her bank account. Make a table to determine if Mrs. Freeman is correct. That's what I say. Now, we need to kind of think about, first of all, Things that we want to pay attention to is definitely the beginning balance, right? That's important. We need to uh, read and, exp and really have a good understanding, like what a withdrawal means and, and what a deposit means. These are all kind of things that are going to help us. And then we can get to the point where we can start taking this problem and actually using another mathematical practice called mathemat mathematical practice number four, which is model with mathematics. Well, first thing is, here we're looking at that problem solving. So it says, read the problem. What do I need to find? I need to find. Well, what our goal here is, that's the, usually the question here. Here they state it as a statement, however. Uh, I don't see a question mark. But I need to find if Mrs. Freeman's uh, checkbook balance is correct in what she states. So let's go ahead and put that down. So here we go. Basically, what I just said, I've written that down. Now, what information do I need to use? Okay, we're showing here, the solve the problem here on the right-hand side. So what information do I need to use? Well, like I mentioned a little earlier, I definitely need to know what the starting account balance was. We have that is important to have, and I believe that's listed right here. That's important. We'd also need to uh, know the amount of the deposit that she put in, which is listed here. This is information we're going to need and also the amount of, uh, of the check, okay, of the check that I believe, if you look at the problem, that she wrote here, all right? She'd written a check for that amount, and that's listed right here. So we're going to need those amounts. So let me go ahead and put that into words right here. And here we go. We need to know the starting balance, the amount of the deposit, and the amount of the check. How will I use the information? How am I going to use it? Well, it says I need to make a table and use the information to, well, let's see, what do we need? Well, if we make that table, 
I'm going to need to, if I look up at the check, like the check register, what we've been learning, uh, I would need to, well, I need to sub, definitely have to subtract, because this is subtraction here. This is adding here. Yeah, so I would need to know that to find the balance. So here it's just showing subtraction. So I would need to use this table since I'm not going to write it up above. So for example, I could put here, since I'm subtracting here, that's the amount I'm subtracting. I could put, I could put my kind of like my money sign here. And let's put a little space here, $63 and 92 cents is what's going to be subtracted. My initial balance was $442.37. So I could put that there showing that's what I can use this table for. Uh, nice little graph paper makes it easy to subtract. So that's going to be five. And then here I have to rename because I can't take nine from three. And this isn't going to help me out either because I can't take three from two, can't take six from four. See the problem here, we're having to come all the way over here to the hundreds place. So we're going to give that 100, which is really 10 tens for this guy in the tens place. He's going to give one of his tens to this guy in the ones place. That will help. And then he's going to take his one one <laughs> and he's going to give that to the tenths place, which is going to be 10 tenths. Now we could do the four. Remember the decimal? Bring it on down. That's right. 11 minus 3 is going to be 8. And then 13 minus 6 is going to be 7. And then, of course, we end up with the 3. So I have $378.45 here. But now I'm adding the deposit. And that deposit is $350 exactly. So I'm just going to be adding these numbers. Now I'm not subtracting. Decimal, we're going to bring it on down. And then we have 8, 12, carry the 1, 6. So I end up with $728.45. Better make sure I have my money sign there. Okay. Typically, if you have the money sign just listed one time there, that's fine. So her correct balance should be $728.45. And I don't remember. Is that what she stated? She did not. She said $729.45. So she missed the mark on that one. Oh, let's fill in this information. So the information that we used was uh, we needed to subtract the check. And we also needed to add the amount of the deposit. Uh, in order to find, we need to add that in order to find that correct answer. There we go. Nice. Okay. I guess we're moving on to the next page. Oh, we still have something else down here. So evaluate, okay, value, evaluate reasonableness. So how can you tell if your answer is reasonable? Well, you do numbers. If you do a quick estimate, that might be a way. I could use like estimation to determine if my answer is reasonable. Definitely one way. That's what I would write. Um, I, I can use estimation. Um, to determine if my answer is reasonable. Okay, so an estimation, just best guess. You know, you're looking at these numbers, you get an idea. This number was so close that I think if you had made an estimate, I, I think that we wouldn't have known that Mrs. Freeman had made a mistake. Here we had to find out the exact answer, and that's what we needed to do. Well, let's go ahead to the next page. And where's my little page turner thingy? There we go. So here, whoa, here's our model with mathematics. Okay, I wanted to have this up so you can see that this is what we basically did. We used a table as the way of modeling it. There's different ways. You have symbols, you have concrete models, you have different things you can use. It says here, I can recognize math in everyday life and use math I know to solve everyday problems. Kind of what we did there in that sample with Mrs. Freeman. We make assumptions so we can estimate to make maybe complex problems easier, identify important quantities, use the correct tools that will help us, you know, to show how they're connected, evaluate my answer and make changes if needed. All right, let's go ahead and shrink this. There we go. So I guess I can get rid of that in that. Goodbye. Thank you very much. And turn this into a little tiny uh, white square. Oh, my goodness. Where'd it go? It's gone. It's like it disappeared. No, no, here it is.
<laughs> Try another problem. It says, now Nick is buying juice for himself and five friends. Each bottle of juice cost $1.25. What a great deal. $1.25. How much do six bottles of juice cost? Make a table to find the cost of six bottles of juice. Use the graphic below to solve the problem. What did it give us down here? Okay, so we have our boxes. Then we also have a um, solve the problem section, which is where last time we made a table. So let's think about it. You know, what do we need to find? Well, first thing is does the problem present like a question? It says, how much do six bottles of juice cost? So it's right there. I need to know how much six bottles of juice cost. Let's write that down. There we go. Now it says, what information do I need to use? We're looking at the problem. What, what information am I going to need to use? Well, uh, in order to find the cost of six bottles, we definitely would need to know the price of one bottle, so like each bottle. And then we also need to know how many bottles are being bought. In this case, we know it's six. So I would say that I would need, I need to use the price of each bottle um, and, and also the number of bottles being bought. Now it says, how will I use the information? Okay, well, I think what we did last time when we set up a table, maybe that's one way we could do it. Clearly, there's an algorithm that you could do, but since we're trying to model for mathematics, it would probably be a good idea that we use some kind of model and make it a little bit easier for us. Okay, so, uh, you know, I just covered, you know, uh, in the information that, that I needed to use in order to solve this problem and then it says how will I use the information and we talked a little bit about how you know by creating a table so I created a table here's the table and we have the bottles of juice and we have the different numbers and we know that the price of one bottle is 125 so I'm just going to fill this part in let's see do we have a purple we do so for that one remember we learned that was one dollar and 25 cents so for two of them this is good mental math this is just two dollars and fifty cents we can just keep adding. Now another dollar is going to make it three fifty and twenty five. Then would make it three dollars and seventy five cents. Now we have our quarter, which will make it four plus one. Will then make it five dollars. And then over here, we also have another dollar twenty five being added. So that's nice. That's really easy to figure out. And then finally, we have the fifty plus a dollar making it seven dollars and fifty cents by adding on that one dollar and twenty five. And by making that table, that lets us know. So the way that it says here, so I made the table and, um, and then I add the amount per bottle until I found the cost of the six bottles is basically the strategy that I did. So let's get that down. So the cost we determined was $7.50. Now what do we have down here? It says, what if? What if Ginny says that 12 bottles of juice cost $25? Is Ginny's statement reasonable? Explain. All right, well, six bottles is $7.50. That's about $8. Now we're talking double that, 12 bottles. Well, that's like 14. No, $25, that would not be reasonable at all. And I have to kind of be able to explain because it tells me to. So definitely it wouldn't be reasonable. I know that six bottles of the juice were, were that, and I just rounded it to eight. So twice that amount. Yeah, it would be would actually be exactly fifteen dollars, but my estimate would still have made it under. So let's go ahead and write that down. There you go. So different ways you could say that. Just one way that you could say that. It says if Nick had ten dollars, how many bottles of juice could he buy? That's a good question. It's a way that we could refer back to our table. We don't have up to that amount, $7.50, is under $10. So if we add on one more $125 onto that, $25 would make that $75 plus one would make that $8.75. And it looks like that we could get one more in there, right? Because $25 would make that nine plus one would be exactly $10. But you could actually purchase eight bottles. Okay, my dear jungle friends. Mr. Water here to say, you know, hasta la vista. That's right, it's it's the end of the video. I know. Oh my goodness, where's my Kleenex? All right, 
we get all emotional. No, we'll be back. Mr. Word keeps coming back. So, live long and prosper, my friend.